Hello again, it's Priscilla Batzell in Spring Hill, Florida at Expressionist Art Studio Gallery and I need art, art therapy. It's been a couple days and we've had some cold and very wet weather. I've also been to the uh, Dollar General and I want to experiment and I'm not sure which one of these I'll use or if I'll use all four different, one, two, three, four different possibilities, but um, I want to play with combs. I'm going to also, instead of doing a ring pour, I'm going to do a dust pan fill, which means that I want to take I'm going to put some gold in the bottom of this. I'm going to use a 16 by 20 inch canvas and make a background, or at least that's my story for right now, a background that, that's going to be jungle themed or vine themed or similar. And I have pulled out all of the green colors that I have and some turquoises and even some Prussian blue and some purple. I just want to put that down flat so you can see it better. I've got a lighter purple and I think I'm going to have some of that as well. I like using purple with greens because it, for me, it feels like shadows. That's a color shifting turquoise. This is a forest green-ish or <laughs> Christmas tree green-ish with probably some metallic. That's got to get opened. I opened these before I got started, but it doesn't necessarily mean there isn't something floating around in there. That wants to plug them up and I think I could probably use a whole bunch of that and not worry about it just like that so what I'm gonna do is instead of instead of adding a ring pour to the canvas and, and uh, running the comb through it I'm gonna add a puddle pour what else do I want in there I'm missing something what am I missing oh there there it is this is the uh, Art mines they don't make anymore. I think I want some more of this minty green. I'm sure I've got another color. Oh, there it is. The neon green that I never ever use. We'll just, because I never use it, I might as well use it up now. And I just want to make sure I have enough color. And I guess since I used the gold to begin with, I'll add some gold. It just seems a little bland to me for right, for some reason right now. I wanted, I wanted that darker green in there. I think the blue is going to help me. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. I hope this works. This might not work, I suppose. I didn't put any, I didn't put any white in there. And I've got this other obnoxious yellow. I could always use my chain if I hate it. And here comes the 16 by 20 inch canvas. Sorry I get those numbers wrong once in a while. I think because I have the black made up, I'm going to use it as a background color. And I don't think I'm going to use it as anything more than a puddle. Because I've got all that color. I'm not going to worry about knocking it off on the edge. I do need to wet my studio rag. Always a good idea to have a studio rag handy. There's all kinds of reasons. That and Q-tips, I have discovered. Can't remember if somebody suggested that or not. Anyway, so here goes nothing. Do I really... Am I got everything in there I want? Oh boy. You know what? I'm going to just back myself up with a little bit more of the green gold. Because that's my favorite. Well, one of my, one of many. And then my inclination is, because we need this to be heavy, that's the whole reason. I got some nice cells in my dustpan. And I'm going to throw this dustpan right into my bucket so the paint doesn't get hard on there. Not that it could today because it's only in the 70s. And so, now, rather than do anything else, like tilt it, which I want to do desperately, I'm going to start by grabbing either that front. I'm going to, I'm going to take the big end of that. And this is the, uh, the sleek one-part teasen style. <laughs> Let's just go over there. And over there, 
and I don't have to use all of it. Actually, I want more of that in there. So that's not a bad start, and I'm going to use my rag I just told you about to wipe that off before I use my, my usual, which is my pants. And now I'm going to grab an edge catcher, which I know you guys need practice with, because you tell me that you get paint in your armpits. You know who you are. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh. It took me a little while to get it right, too. I want an edge catcher. Oh, look at that, right there where I need it to be. So I'm going to try and um, pay more attention to what I do with the edge catcher. Now if I see that the, my marks are fading, I'll add some more. It's a lot like using a basting brush to add marks. I really like how that black looks over there. This, the whole plan behind this is um, me thinking that I'm going to make a background that I can add flowers or leaves to, which would be kind of cool, you know, a jungle theme, a vine. I'm going to try and pay attention to where the mass of paint is flowing. And it, there's a certain level of patience going on here. What is that thing? What are you thing? Something seems to be preventing everything from flowing down. So there's some pretty wild colors. I'm going to put that right up there for right now in, in case I get a, an overabundance in one area and let it spill over the side. I really want to drag the comb through there again, to tell you the truth. Maybe I'll do the finer part this time. Slowly. And I might do that as I go along. Let's grab some of this. Pull that out. Because I can. The name of my first book on the Amazon link. Oh, the Amazon link and all the other links are now on Linktree, which is the number one and only link underneath the video which should make finding anything you're looking for really convenient. And I am not going to spill my paint away. I might clean off my edge catcher after it goes over the side and use my OXO omelet turning spatula available on the Amazon list. I'm going to get a couple of bottles out of my way. I realized that the edge catcher, cleaning the edge catcher off is important to me, more important than a lot of things. So I'm going to take and I need to leave myself space. That was the whole point. So I'm going to take that beautiful paint. It'll probably get lost, but it will help flow other paint. I'm going to take that beautiful paint and do the same thing. I'm not going to waste any paint if I can possibly help it. And of course, there's always some kind of waste because even with an edge catcher, you can't necessarily recapture all of it. So I'm not sure what channel you might be watching on. I have two now. One is Expressionist Art Studio Gallery Priscilla Batsell, my first and original channel. The second one is Phoenix Rising Priscilla Batsell Art. I'm so glad that did not blow into my painting. We have little microbursts going on right here, right now. And I'm thinking I'm going to use that edge catcher again, so anything that's not covered in this area will have a pretty good chance of getting covered when I retrieve my paint. So I'm just going to keep adding the edge catcher under where I see paint dripping. Maybe keep it to this side so I can use some more of that. Let's just go down over here and let everything go down to the bottom if that's at all possible. I'm not seeing as many of my stripes as I was hoping for. And I am going to rock my painting onto the paint dripping down the edge catcher. I'm also going to do that down a little further so that I get a covered edge, a really nice covered edge, actually. I'm going to pull that edge catcher away and wipe my hand off. I've been standing in puddles. Everything is so nice and wet here. So let's do the comb again, big or small. Let's try the big one again. No, nope, let's go for the small one. <laughs> I know you need to do this with heavier paint, so this is a risky proposition at this point, but we've got some really neat cells and stuff. So I figure it's worth a try just to have some fun. And I'm sure a smaller canvas and heavier paint would get you, would enable you to keep the stripes. 
And it might be important also to um, to tip more slowly. I see one more spot I want right here. I could use the other combs. I'm kind of liking the marks I've got. I'm going to take more paint right off my edge catcher. The cells are awesome. Put it right here. I think if I hadn't blown on that, I would have kept my stripes. So bear that in mind. Should you be rescuing paint, just let that paint lay. You can tip it to spread it and you can keep your stripes. But you can't necessarily blow into it because as soon as you agitate it... Well, I'm getting some nice cells, but it is really dark. And I don't actually mind that I have so many different areas. I really actually am a big fan of that. And once I get my paint back on my edge catcher, I may try and get this paint off too. I'm kind of often want to uh, scrape it off and put it in places where I feel like it needs it. So this is like sort of a long drawn out process. I got five minutes left to tell you guys. I don't need to tell you much of anything. If you want a link, look under the, uh, the link tree link and there you'll find Facebook groups for students and uh, Facebook groups for fans and collectors and Facebook groups for people who want to shop on pixels.com or Fine Art America and pixels.com and Fine Art America. So that's kind of cool. I got to keep making sure that my edge catcher gets taken advantage of. And I'm, I've got plenty of paint. I'm not really pouring. Oh, what's that thing? Is it a thing? I was going to blow on that, but I'm not going to do it. I am going to see if I've got any more paint. Oh, I do. I have a little more paint. Cool. Right there you go. I'll have to check my edges. I'm not sure as I'm as, as thrilled with that black as I was when I saw it earlier because I thought I was going to tip more of it away. Just going to use my fingers. I got some neat patterns and some, some cool areas, so I'm not complaining yet. <laughs> I'm not actually complaining. It happens. Probably after you're gone most of the time, though. All right, so I mostly filled in. Ah, oh, I could take a skewer. I should show you that. I can take a skewer and just shimmy stuff toward the edge. And if I'm not blowing into it, which will make cells sometimes, like I've got some over here. They're just really, they're really kind of hidden in the darkness there. But if you just shimmy the edge of your skewer along through the paint, you can sort of herd a little roll of paint along with that skewer. I haven't torched yet, and I torched to release the bubbles caught in the paint, and uh, I'm not really minding most of what I'm seeing, but it's not keeping me from wanting to do some more of it, as in I kind of wanted that viney feeling I was looking for, and I know that when Mina does this on her much larger canvases, She's looking for those layers that are so beautiful. But um, I was just looking for my jungle background. That spatula is going in the bucket. And then I'm going to think about what I'm doing for a minute. I want to use the big one. Do I dare? I love these cells down here. Oh boy. I don't necessarily want to mess with that nice long stripe. Yes, I do. I kind of want to put the chain in there worse than you can imagine because I love what the chain does. I just don't really... I want to uh, experiment, but I don't want to ruin anything, which might be hard to do. I kind of wanted something else in here, and I'm not sure how I would do that. I'm going to grab the chain. Am I? It's way over there. That's a huge chain. Let's find another chain that's not as huge. They're all huge. Okay, well... Let's put most of that chain in my hand. This is a number 10 chain. And as long as I've got some paint on there, I can, I can use the paint on there for something else. I forgot the background was black, so I'm going to be a little careful because I'm obviously dredging up all kinds of stuff. But the more areas of strange patterns I add, the more definite, def no. <laughs> I'm not using the right word. The more dimensionality be becomes prevalent. 
there's, there's definitely some heavy paint in there. As you use chain, you do get used to what it's willing to do for you. Oh, I really didn't want to get rid of any of that. Okay. Well. Let's try new stuff. Back and forth we go. Where we land, nobody knows. All that black behind is um, coming right through. And I want to clean it off. <laughs> so I can have a chance to see what else I can do with this. Which basically means putting the schmutzy part in my hand. I'm going to use the center section. And do a little few twists and turns. Try not to destroy anything really cool, but there's some really cool stuff that's already gone the way of that. So I've used up all my time. And I've got two minutes left to tell you guys. Make sure you know that I do sell my artwork and I could use to sell some. I also have an exhibition video on the end screens of most videos on Expressionist Art Studio Priscilla Batsell where you can see artworks. And if I did happen to be running a drawing, you might find the prizes there. <laughs> oh, I'm taking risks. So, like I said, this is meant to have flowers on it tomorrow. Unless I look at it after it's dried and it's just so tremendously cool that I can't restrain myself. I want a whole bunch more purple. I just want to put it in and move it around and see what happens. It's kind of bizarre. I have just enough time to mess around with it a little bit longer. Which for me is going to include moving everything by tilting it right now. Because sometimes those chain marks look too contrived. And that was why I put them in was because the comb marks look a little too contrived. So letting all this sort of meld isn't actually hurting my feelings at all. And it's feeling more like jungle to me by the moment. So let's torch before you're gone, and I'll tell you again, this is Priscilla Batsell in Spring Hill, Florida at Expression Start Studio Gallery in the backyard. And I've got paint on my fingers, which is perfect. It's nice to remove the drips from underneath. I am going to torch that, and then I'll be gone. Not sure what I can tell you guys that you can't find under the... Under the link tree, it would be Pinterest, Instagram, Twitter links, and all kinds of cool stuff. You know what? I'm just... I just want to use my skewer. And there's one minute left. And where else do I need to use it? Not too many places, actually. Just have to go back. If you scrape up any and you expose some canvas, go back in the opposite direction you just came from. Most of the time it will cover whatever you need. Just a few spirals here and there. Because I can. Hey, that's the name of my first book on the Amazon link that's under the link tree. I love spirals. I think I should restrain myself and then I add some spirals and I'm like, why was I restraining myself? I don't know. That's dramatic. I don't usually work in a lot of greens. Every time I turn that torch on, it makes me want to do something else. All right, so I think I'm almost good now. And I will see you guys in on. If you are interested in binge watching some videos, there's over 1,310 of them on Expressionist Art Studio, Priscilla Batsell on Creative Playlists. So I hope you visit me there. Give me a thumbs up. Thank you for the wonderful comments and all the donations that I kept me painting all this time. I hope to see you again soon. Look on the community board for tomorrow's video and Facebook group, Expressionist Art Studio Gallery Appreciation Group. With any luck, they'll be there. <laughs> With any luck, I'll still be here.